Welcome back from the business studios. There, yeah, laddie, they're taking us around the world and Nigeria's economy. And again, you saw Mr. Best Macaroni there doing what he knows to do best, laying it out clean and square. Nigeria, the economy, and where we're going. But staying with the economy here, the president yesterday set up what is called what was called the Presidential Economic Coordination Council and Economic Management Team. Okay, sorry, it's not done. Economic Management Team Emergency Task Force. It looks like a lot of words, but they have a lot of work to do. So let the words come in and let's see the work done. But that's what we're looking at, at in this segment of Sunrise Daily and to help us understand exactly what's happening here and what's going to happen, what they're likely to be doing, the implications of this new team that the president has put together. We have Mr. Laulu Akonde, who is a... Uh, of, Media aide to the former vice president and a journalist as well. Former media, former media aide to the former vice president and a journalist. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. And how are you doing today? Very great. Looking sharp. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that news of that council that the president put together, and of course, the team was drawn from public and private sector right. all together there. Right. How did you? How did that come to you? Well, I think the, the, the first thing is that, uh, so the president, uh, again, has demonstrated that he is uh, quite responsive. Uh, so the need for some kind of better coordination of the, the economic direction of governments, you know, uh, seems to have been uh, confirmed, you know, with the formation of the Presidential uh, Economic Coordination Council and then uh, trying to make the economic management team more visible, uh, now having a tax force. So it's a good thing. It's an acknowledgement of the need for coordination. Now, that, that coordination has been missing, and, and that role is a very critical uh, uh, function. Now, uh, in the past administration, what happened was that in between 2015 and 2019, you had an economic management team. Now, which is different from the National Economic Council? Many people mix up the two. The National Economic Council is where all the governors of the states come with the governor of Central Bank, uh, Central Bank led by the, uh, uh, the vice president. And their role is to advise the president on the coordination of national economy. Now, that is different from the role of a economic management team. An economic management team is, uh, is an arm or, or a unit, uh, so a body of the federal government, you know, uh, that deals with day-to-day -day management of the, of the economy for the federal government. You know, so, so it's, it's not a council that is advisory. It's, it's really, you know, hands-on. And that was what happened uh, between 2015 and 2019. Now, in 2019, uh, President, then President Buhari, dissolved the economic management team, and there, were no, there was no economic management team in the sense. So, so having President uh, Tinobu uh, come back to the idea of having an economic management team is quite praiseworthy, because you need to have such a team, you know, to, uh, to, to, that will be hands-on, because the, the, the work that we're talking about here is an, something that you have to be hands-on. Mm. Mm. A lot of things to coordinate. So this is a good move by the President. Well, quite a lot of words uh, in this, and I, I imagine that every single word in the title of this team <laughs> is very important, and yeah. that, that's why the, the name is very long, Presidential Economic Coordination Council and an Economic Management Team Emergency Task Force. Yeah. Before this team was named, we know that the president met uh, with some leaders in the private sector, uh, right. uh, some of whom he is now named in this team, or many of whom is now named in this particular team. Right. So was that a precursor uh, to this, or was that... Because many people had assumed that when he met with them, they had, a, a, you know, they yeah. had been automatically, uh, uh, will I say, yeah. inaugurated right. as a team. So this announcement came as a... We thought that was done already. Yeah. Was this, is there something peculiar about this one? Well, I, I think uh, to be charitable, uh, I think we should assume that when the president met uh, Dangote, Elumelu, and Boa, and the rest of them, including Mr. Rewani, mm -hmm. I think we should assume, we could assume that what has happened now yeah. uh, may have been one of the discussions that they had. 
But what the presidency announced then was a formation of a committee. Mm -hmm. you know, but we don't hear of that committee anymore. But we hear of a new council where they are also members and where the president is chair. So I think it's reasonable to say that uh, this new uh, Presidential Economic Coordination Council grew out of, of the president's committee. meeting uh, with those uh, private sector gurus. Mm. So that, that is all that we assume. A committee would not have cut what it is that this council is expected to do. Yeah, so, so that's, that's the point that I'm trying to uh, explain so that people can understand it. The, 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 there are specific roles. So, so the role of a council uh, is to have essentially an over over uh, overbearing uh, and you know trying to have an oversight. oversight an oversight yeah it's different from a management team so 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 you have for instance in the, in the corporate world you have a management team led by the chief executive you know or ceo and then you have a board so so a council normally operates like a board in government so so if you have a, if you have anything that is called council in government oftentimes it operates like a, like as a board mm. different from the people who do the day to day so I guess that this council, the problem that I see in this council is that, so it has a little bit of, uh, uh, it is some kind of uh, tension between it, you know, just speaking on top of my head, from the National Economic Council. We already have the National Economic Council, mm -hmm. which was the, the, I mean, a designation, a stipulation of the constitution. constitution. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so this uh, uh, coordination at the level of the president, yeah, the president has all the powers, by the way, to do these things. But you know, there's a little bit of okay. So, what happens with that council and these guys? You know, how do you, uh, you know, manage ensure? It. Yeah, but I guess it's something that is uh, manageable. And uh, you see that the VP is, is also the vice chair of the of, of the council. Yeah. Well, mm. it's a good thing that the VP is a part of this because yeah. we know that constitutionally, the VP is the one who chairs the National Economic the council. council. And yeah. we also we've also seen um, in recent times that the president, um, in some sometimes attends. The National Economic Council, if he has maybe things to say or messages to pass, um, I'm sure he, he will attend and then he will exit and then the meeting mm -hmm. continues. Right. Uh, so I do not know. Do you think that, because I mean, you have said the president has powers to establish this, and I want yeah. to imagine that he would have, uh, you know, consulted the attorney general, et cetera, to see if there will be any legal impediments. But mm -hmm. Eventually, what sort of results do you think we can expect? Because at the end of the day, really, what Nigerians want is an economy that works for all. Absolutely. Not for, the, not for a few select people or for a few members of the private sector. For all. How can the president ensure that while listening to these people who make yeah. up his economic council, right. uh, that, you know, the, 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 well, I say the outcomes of whatever it is they come up with is something that just works not just for the interest of a select few in the private right. sector, right. but for the majority, if not for the benefit of all the Nigerians. Majority. I mean, very, very important things, you know, but I, I wanted to uh, just clarify what you had said about the participation of the president. Yes, the president can participate at neck, but that is often at the uh, when he convokes the National Economic Council. So, so he has to convoke, you know. So, so when the president gets into office, he holds a meeting to to inaugurate the National Economic Council. That is when he speaks to them and says that this is the kind of stuff that I want. Now, their their relationship after that is essentially they will meet under the chairmanship of the vice president, and they will send him the outcome of their advisory. You know, so I, I wanted to just back you up on, on that is, in terms of his participation. Now, the bigger issue is exactly what is going to be the outcome of the work of this council. And that is what Nigerians are concerned. And you raise a very important point because, yes, uh, President Buhari took a decision in his own time to say that, look, I don't want private sector players participating directly in policy. That was his whole view. A lot of people think, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, Jonathan had them and all that. Now, President uh, Tinubu has gone back to that situation and said that, look, I want private sector people to be directly involved in some kind of this economic management thing. So it, it, it raises the question that you raised. So, so how are we protecting the, uh, the public interest? Because, you know, for the most part, now, and these are important gurus, you know, Dan Gote, uh, Tony and uh, 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 Samad, these are quite really cool. But whenever you allow those guys to have a direct role in economic policy making, anytime you let them have a direct role, they are businessmen, they will try 
to use it to their own advantage. It's a no-brainer. Mm. So, 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 and I think if you look at the statement uh, that a jury signed, you will see that he said that the president said that he will let them do this for no more than one year. Mm -hmm. so, so, so clearly, even the president himself is aware you know, that these things have to be managed uh, gingerly. The involvement of big-time players in the economy in direct policy making is a very, is a very, uh, you know, I mean, something that you have to be really, you know, to the extent that somebody like Buhari said, no, no, I don't want them taking part in direct policy making. So you are right. You know, the question is what is going to happen. For instance, they will have to come up with ideas which we have to uh, be appropriated. So we are looking at 2024. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, you know, but uh, in, in terms of ideas, so you have people like uh, uh, Rewane sitting down there. You know, one of the most uh, brilliant economists of our time. Clearly, so so there are expectations that when you have people like that, uh, you know, you, you may get some useful ideas. And of, also, they have Professor Salami, who was the uh, uh, chief economic advisor to uh, to President Buhari. He's also now. In, uh, I think he is in one of the teams. I don't remember which one, whether the council or the emergency. Yeah, you know, there, there, there's some who argue, there's an argument, or someone they were arguing that the president's chief economic advisor now, as in the current president's chief economic advisor, is not clearly put out there. Yeah. And one would think that to set up a team like this, he will have, his chief economic advisor will be like the chair of that team. He should be an advisory team to the president. Mm. That now, so can this team be likened to that kind of a team? Or this is not in any way yeah. related? So, 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 so we are talking of two teams now. So, yeah. so, so, so we have the Presidential Economic Coordination Council. Council. And then we have the uh, Economic Management Team uh, Emergency Task Force. Now, I think... That task force is essentially still the economic management team. team. What this president has done is to uh, have an economic management team that is chaired by a minister, that is the coordinating minister of the, of the economy. And there's a problem there. Even the, 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 the composition of the economic management team's emergency task force is also chaired by the coordinating minister of the economy. The problem is that in that task force, you have governors. You have at least three governors, including Professor Soludo. Now, it is inelegant to have a minister chair a meeting of governors. If you have three governors sitting down there, it's inelegant to ask a minister to chair it. So, you know, the governor can just look at it and say, I'll send my commissioner or I'll send an advisor. Because in the order of protocol, the, the governor is senior to the minister, which is why the constitution in the formation of the National Economic Council, where the governors come, the constitution says the vice president should chair. What I would have expected, and what many people have expected uh, President Tinubu to do, is to put Shetima there to chair the economic management team and to chair this uh, emergency fund, so, I mean, uh, emergency task force, so that the governors we see the need to be there. So you're going to put the governors, uh, you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're kind of putting them out there to see, okay, is the governor going to sit down in a meeting that is presided over by a minister? The governor is elected. The minister is not. So in terms of hierarchy, the governor is senior to the minister. So, 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 so it's curious that, uh, that, that we don't have Shetima. Vice President Shetima ought to be the chairperson first of the economic management team, like Buari did in 2015 and 2019, and then he ought to be the chairman, in my view, of the economic management team's uh, task force. Task force. It should be Shetima coordinating it. The governors will go to a meeting chaired by Shetima. They may not go to a meeting chaired by a minister. Okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm almost confused because I, I'm thinking that that statement, uh, you know, I'm looking at it and I'm looking at, uh, okay, I can see it now. But yeah. we had a situation, we've had, this is not the first time we've seen a coordinating minister of the economy. Uh, under Dr. Okonjo Ewiala, yeah. she was coordinating minister of the economy. Yeah. And, of course, we saw the kind of tips that she had with governors when it came to, you know, sovereign wealth fund and, right. you know, excess credit accounts and saving for the country. But that didn't stop her from, you know, uh, pushing for the things that she pushed with, with the governors of Nigeria. And I think that with benefit of hindsight, she's been proven right. 
for some of the things that she pushed pushed for. So looking at where we're coming from and the 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 the, the urgency of where we currently are. Should all this protocol and what have you be the concern of governors at this time, or should it be how it is that their states move forward and how this country moves forward, given that we are coming from an experience where we have been warned before? And it was this, say, this kind of pride and this kind of, oh, no, we're not going to listen to a minister, perhaps also because she was, I don't want to bring back that she was a woman, uh, you know, that sort of um, pride that has maybe partly led us to some of the rain that is currently beating us right now. Right. I mean, very, 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 very good point, uh, uh, Marco. And I share your sentiments, you know. But, you know, a, a few things. When Okonjo Iwiala was the coordinating minister of the economy, she was not the chair of the economic management team. She was a member of the economic management team. She was the chair of the technical working group of that team. So, so there is the economic management team, and they have a technical working group. So as a coordinating minister, she coordinated that aspect. But it was, I think in that case, it was the president himself that was chairing the economic management team. Look, these things matter. Even this, the good book says, let everything be done decently and in order. There is no, it, it is not for nothing that a governor is elected. A governor, so so I, 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 why I share a sentiment about, look, let's just get the job done. Look, there are also issues. You don't want somebody to put somebody who you are ahead of to put them, you know, in front of you. It's just, you know, and, and it doesn't make the, the, the job work because the governor is a president in the state. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when you look at the caliber of people, you have Professor uh, Sholudo in that place. Mm -hmm. You have Governor uh, uh, Abiodu uh, in that place. You have the governor of uh, Niger State. These are people that went through an election. They are the chief executive. It, I, I, and I want to put it very clear. I don't think it's right to expect uh, 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 a minister, Ex especially because you have a vice president. What's the job of the vice president? The, pres the vice president should do that role, should come in. Look, I have been in government in eight years. When you have a minister uh, uh, as a head of a federal economic council uh, committee and you have other ministers, even the ministers don't go. You understand? You know, if the president says, look, I want the committee, I want this job done, you know, this is the minister that is going to be the chair, even the ministers don't go because they say, well, I'm a minister, I'm a minister. Mm -hmm. Only very few people go. So, so the president has a duty to, to ensure that things are done decently and in order. But there is a further explanation. I'm looking at this uh, statement now. It says the economic management team established in October 2023 and chaired by the coordinating minister of the economy, and Minister of Finance serves as the working group, which perhaps, Indeed. yes, working group under the Presidential Economic Coordination Council. Yeah. So if this is a subset of that Presidential Economic Coordination Council, can we d indirectly say that this is a technical working in, in, committee in, in, in which very case, much like what Mrs. Okonjo Ewell well, said? In, okay, in, in which case you won't put governors in that uh, working group. You won't put governors there. And if you put the governor there and the governor sends his minister, the governor is, in, is, is writing proper, acting properly. Look, it's about the role of the vice president. That is why the constitution, which is the grand norm, that's why the constitution says, put the vice president as chair of National Economic Council. But there's a that, reason why, you know, the president made uh, a minister, the coordinating minister of yes. the economy. Yeah. And we know that usually what the vice president does is, I mean, what he does in his capacity, I mean, as chairing the, the National Economic, Economic Council, Council, is largely advisory, isn't it? To the president. Yeah. And, 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 and that's the work, uh, is, is, is to coordinate the national economy. Because the governors are the ones running their states. You want to have a kind of uh, oversight on all everything happening, to, happening together. So you bring all the governors together. You put the vice president as the chair and you say, advise me. That's what the constitution says. I mean, I, I just think that. But, hey, if the president has the powers to say that I want a minister there, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that, you know, that might just be uh, a problem right there for the operation of the... Of the I of sincerely person. hope that egos don't get in the way of this. And, and I hope so too. Because if, if, at the end of the day, what, what you're talking about, something being inelegant, is, is the right of protocol, all of these are things that we use to massage egos. <laughs> what people want right now... Is the result. It's the result. No doubt about that. It, it, it shouldn't be the primary concern. And if somebody who wasn't elected is the person that has the wand, 
Uh, should we really be saying, oh, you are not elected, you cannot exactly tell us what to do or what not to do? Mm. Should that be where we are? No, no, no. I mean, I, I, like, like I said, I, I share the sentiment. I'm just giving you, based on my own experience in government, mm -hmm. I'm just telling you how thing, things work mm -hmm. and, and how, you know, uh, you can avoid, you know, some of this uh, kind of issue. But, hey, you know, it's, it's entirely not impossible that you might just find out the government and say, you know what, don't worry, you know, we don't care about that. It's, it's also possible. Mm. Well, it was interesting to see what exactly um, happens, but I don't know what implication. With all of these committees, do you think we'll have too many bodies coordinating things for the economy? Um, and do you, how do you think, do you think the attention will be divided? I mean, I'm just trying to imagine, for instance, right now, the coordinating minister of the economy having to do his day-to-day -day chore as a minister of finance, you know, coordinating other people, mm. having to attend these meetings, and all. Yeah, it's a lot, isn't it? It, it is a lot, and you know, I think uh, to, uh, back to Neota's point. I think the president is still missing a chief economic advisor. You know, right now, nobody has been designated as a chief economic advisor. So it would seem that the chief economic advisor is the coordinating minister mm -hmm. of the economy. So he, in, Again, addition, in addition to that, he has to perform no, no, that no, no, role. Yeah, so so exactly. So so he has he has all those roles, and of course, we we, we know that Mr. Edu is somebody that is very up to par. No doubt about it. You know, very smooth uh, uh, operator knows what he's doing, uh, and I, 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 I think I personally uh, believe that he does have the gravitas. You know, uh, I just hope that uh, you know there, there is not just too much chaos. So you have the National Economic Council, mm. you have the Presidential Economic Coordination Council, you have the Economic Management Team, and now you have the Economic Management Team Emergency Task Force. <laughs> You know, so let, let, let somebody just, has to have an oversight on all this. Let me just put it out, based on the statement that was released, it says the E that's the Economic Emergency Task Force. Yes. Is mandated to formulate and implement consolidated emergency economic plans. Yeah. Uh, but then see this uh, to submit a comprehensive plan of economic interventions for twenty twenty four. This is the first quarter of twenty twenty four that's, that's winding that. down. down right. in the next few days to the P to the PECC, that's the Presidential Economic Coordination, Coordination Council. Council. Covering the next six months. So they have to do this and submit something yeah. for twenty twenty four. Again, back to the question mark we asked. Wouldn't that be too much? Because there's still the day-to-day -day running of the economy. And we all, we do know that at least is it, there's a consensus that for the economy to move forward, there has to be a nexus between the fiscal policy and the monetary policy. Right. That has to come together. Right. So with this extra load on the economic management team, now mm. a task force, yeah. and the minister, right. how well do you think this would even play out? Yeah, first of all, you must have a lot of uh, uh, sympathy for the coordinating minister of the economy. Uh, he's carrying such a big load. He's the chair is, is, the, is the one that is essentially now the uh, chief economic advisor, is the minister for finance. You know, we must pray for him a lot. Now, but the reason why they must develop a plan is that right now there is really, there is really no economic blueprint. So, so, so the economic management team uh, emergency task force has been, according to that statement by uh, Chief Ingelali, uh, has been mandated to develop the, uh, the, the, the blueprint, you know, that will now be considered by the Presidential Economic Coordination Council. The truth of the matter is that, look, the president can do these things by himself, but... Uh, to my first point, it seems to be saying that, okay, okay, people want me to consult widely. People are saying that, what am I doing? You know, so, wow, let me bring all these guys together and hear them out. Mm. And the president has that kind of leverage. So ultimately, and this is my point, ultimately it will depend on the president and in this particular case on Mr. Edu because government work is a day-to-day -day work. My counsel in the circumstances is that, look, use the vice president also because the vice president has the convening authority that the minister does not have. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Akande, we want to thank you so much for coming in this morning. We do wish the president and the PEC 
and EET, that's Peg being the coordinating yeah, council yeah. for the president. So Peg with two C's. Peg with two C's. <laughs> and then the emergency task force, we do wish them well. We want to thank you, Mr. Laula Conde, former media aide to former vice president. Thank you for coming in this morning. Thank you for having me. Life experiences. It's plea that the vice president should be the one involved. Oh, yeah, because I guess he was in the middle of the grind <laughs> in the oh, last administration. But that's where we'd have to say thank you so much for letting us be a part of your morning. We do appreciate those of you that sent in your comments, your emails. Uh, we will not be able to take them today, but um, tomorrow being Friday. Uh, I'll hold him to that commitment. <laughs> Thank you. Tomorrow so and tomorrow is Good Friday. It's Good Friday, so don't mm. worry. We'll It'll take your feedback. One. It'll be a good one. Thank you again. Go down and be the best of you. I'm Neota Ibe. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Malfe Ogun Yusuf. Amaya Makinde, do have a beautiful day.